Hello everyone. Today our subject will be the Type 26 frigate of the UK Royal Navy, also known as the City Class. They are the next generation general purpose frigates for the UK, with an emphasis on anti-submarine warfare, but also capability to support air defense and anti-ship strikes. Variants of the Type 26 are being built for the Royal Australian and Canadian navies as well. As always with my videos, let's start with the background. The original program that would lead to the Type 26 started in 1998, known as the Future Surface Combatants Program. They are the eventual replacement for the Royal Navy's Type 23 frigate. The Type 23 are light anti-submarine warships designed to counter Soviet nuclear submarines in the North Atlantic, although they have been used for other purposes as well. First, the Royal Navy did research to figure out whether a trimaran design involving multiple hulls was workable for a large complex warship. However, a conventional design was ultimately preferred. The future surface combatants program went through several changes over the next decade, not all of which were consequential. By 2007, the program has crystallized into three ship classes, the C-1, C-2 and C-3. The C-1 was to be a specialized anti-submarine warfare ship with a large displacement of above 6,000 tons. C-2 was a smaller, general-purpose frigate, displacing four to 5,000 tons. It will have a balance between anti-submarine, air defense, and anti-ship capabilities. A jack of all trades, master of none. C-3 was a blue water global corvette with duties including minesweeping, patrol, and survey. In 2008, the future surface combatants program gained some traction, as it was brought forward at the expense of not building two Type 45 destroyers. BAE Systems actually received a contract to design the C-1 and C-2 frigates, while the C-3 variant, the Corvette, was dropped in favor of dedicated mine warfare vessels. However, by 2010, the future surface combatants program was consolidated into a new program called the Global Combat Ship, which covered just C-1, the large anti-submarine frigate of the previous program. The Global Combat Ship would later become the Type 26. After several iterations in the design and required specifications by the Navy, the global combat ship settled on a single design by 2015, a large warship of at least 7,000 tons standard displacement. However, the UK government reduced the planned number for the Type 26 from 13 ships to 8, primarily owing to the high cost of the frigate, at around £1.3 billion per unit for the Batch 1 ships, by 2022, partly due to delays in construction. To compensate for the reduction in the Type 26 numbers, a new class of five smaller general purpose frigates would be built, known as the Type 31. The Type 31 can be viewed as somewhat analogous to the C2 ships of the earlier program. Steel cutting for the first three ships of the class of eight took place in July 2017. Now, there is a lot of agenda-driven media coverage of the construction process, talking about how many thousands of jobs it provides, and how many subcontracts have been awarded to local UK firms. I personally don't think that is very important, because there is no comparison discussing how many jobs would be provided if the government spent the money on something else, or what the stimulus to the economy would be. Discussion of the economic benefits from the Type 26 program has been generally without economic merit, and I say that as a professional economist. 
Anyway, construction is taking place at the BAE Systems Naval Shipyard in Glasgow, Scotland, by the River Clyde. The lead ship, the HMS Glasgow, was launched in November of 2022, but commissioning has been delayed until late 2026. In fact, the third ship is currently scheduled for entering service in 2029. And all eight ships may not be all active until the mid 2030s, so it will be a very long time before they can fully replace the Type 23 frigates. Now, moving on to the ship's notable design features, weapons, and capabilities. The Type 26 is a highly complex warship, and it is impossible to cover every aspect of the vessel in a short amount of time. But this video provides a starting point. The Type 26 is a very large frigate, 150 meters in length, with a beam of 20.8 meters, officially displacing 8,000 tons fully loaded, or 6,900 tons standard displacement, which is basically the same as a full-sized destroyer. The hull contains a high forward freeboard, supporting its seakeeping qualities. Active stabilizers are a standard feature of modern surface combatants, and makes for a steadier weapons platform and reducing sailor fatigue. The Type 26 has what is now a standard stealthy design against radar returns, expected of a modern surface combatant. Vertical angles are not present to minimize radar returns, while the superstructure is compact and the radar mast is enclosed. As a side benefit, these features give high visual appeal. The Type 26 has a core complement of 157, but has substantial spare space for another 50 Marines. Or elder passengers and specialists that may be embarked for specific missions. The ship reportedly has very spacious and generous living accommodation as a deliberate design choice. Supposedly, the quality of life is a major improvement over the preceding Type 23 class, with its rather cramped accommodation. All else equal, this means the Type 26 is better suited for long duration blue water missions. By the way, if you enjoyed our video so far, please press the like button. The Type 26 shares several common concepts with its predecessor, the Type 23. The main requirements for anti-submarine warfare dictates the key features of the ship. The hull form and propulsion have a low acoustic signature to avoid interfering with passive sonar, and also makes it a bit harder for submarines to detect the ship. The propulsion systems are different from each other. The Type 26 uses a combined diesel-electric or gas configuration. Which is a simpler alternative to the combined diesel-electric and gas on the Type 23. The single word difference actually means quite a lot in terms of engineering challenges. However, the basic idea is the same across the two classes. They both retain the ability to sprint with gas turbines engaged to allow high speeds. And quiet diesel-electric drive for low speeds. The small transom flap at the stern for the Type 26 modifies the distribution of pressure on the after hull, reducing drag, and offers a modest improvement in fuel efficiency, reducing propeller load, cavitation, vibration, and noise. Making the ship quieter and reducing the range it can be heard by submarines passive sonars. The Type 26 has a large flight deck and hangar with aircraft handling, refueling, and air weapon handling to support rotary wing assets, such as helicopters used to locate and attack the submarine. Reportedly, there is accommodation for two medium-sized helicopters. Including the Augusta Westland Merlin and the Wildcat, both of which are serving in the Royal Navy in the anti-submarine role, among other duties. 
Most frigates, and indeed many destroyers, can only service one helo. So having two helos is a major boost to anti-submarine capabilities. The key anti-submarine sensor is the towed array sonar, which includes both passive sonars, so a set of hydrophones, and active sonar as well. The towed array sonar is deployed from a winch housed on the quarter deck. This is supplemented by an active passive bow-mounted sonar array housed in a fiberglass dome. According to the Royal Navy, the flexible mission bay is a major aspect of the ship. It is basically a spare space that can be used operationally in a variety of ways. It allows containers, equipment, or autonomous systems to be self-loaded alongside and deployed at sea. Mission modules can be connected to the ship's services to supply electrical power, ventilation, and air conditioning. The mission bay is interconnected to the hangar with a fireproof door and has measures in place to protect the space from weather and water ingress. The main radar mast in the middle is built from composite materials to reduce top weight, supporting an array of sensors and allowing the primary search radar to be sighted about 35 meters above the waterline, providing a very far radar horizon. The main search radar is the Type 997 Artisan 3D radar, a rotating radar both compact and supposedly highly affordable. It is built by BAE Systems. According to BAE, Artisan can detect small objects traveling at Mark 3, more than 25 kilometers away. It can track up to 800 objects simultaneously and is resistant to electronic interference. But of course they would say that. Artisan provides initial targeting data to the air defense missiles, the Sea Scepter, and can support a salvo of missiles in flight via the two-way platform data link terminals. Precise details of the radar's performance are not public, however. Time to discuss the weaponry. The Type 26 shall have 24 Mark 41 VLS vertical launch system. The Mark 41 is the most widely used VLS in the world, and offers the option of launching a broad variety of missile types. This includes the new missile from the Future Cruise and Anti-Ship Weapon Program undertaken by Britain and France, which will provide a supersonic or hypersonic land attack and anti-ship capability. Officially, the weapon's entry into service is assumed to be 2028, although there is some skepticism that such a complex weapon can be delivered in that time frame. The Royal Navy may also purchase US missiles that can be fired by the Mark 41 cells, including the anti-submarine rockets, the Ram 139 ASROC, the SM-3 ballistic defense missile, or SM-6 long-range air defense missile. However, these are only possibilities at this stage and are not known to be under consideration. It would be a challenge to integrate these weapons with the ship's radars and sensors. Another option would be to quad-pack additional sea scepters, the main area air defense missile, into the Mark 41 VLS. The most advanced version of the Sea Scepter air defense missile has the range to defend nearby ships and also has a modest anti-ship capability at close range. The Type 26 has two well-separated 24-cell Sea Scepter VLS modules, one below the bridge and one behind the funnel. 48 missiles are an increase on the 32 carried by the Type 23 and reflects the need for the ship to be able to defend itself when operating independently, or if providing escorts for the carrier strike force. In total, there are 72 VLS launches on the Type 26, including 24 Mark 41 and 48 smaller cells for the Sea Scepter only. If the 24 Mark 41 VLS are to all quad-pack the Sea Scepters, the Type 26 would carry a theoretical maximum load of 144 missiles. 
For point defense, the Type 26 has the standard self-defense guns and the two Phalanx Block 1B Seawers, two 30mm Mark II auto cannons, aka the automated small caliber gun designed to defend against fast attack craft armed with short range missiles. There are also two mini guns and a number of general purpose machine guns. The Type 26 has sufficient power generation to allow the phalanx to be replaced by direct energy weapons, when or if the technology becomes available. The main gun, the 127mm 5-inch Mark 45 naval gun, is a mature system. It is new to the Royal Navy and will have to be integrated with the combat management system and sensors. However, the Mark 45 gun benefits from commonality with many NATO countries and the option of advanced long-range ammunition. Once it is ready, the Type 26 Global Combat Ship will be one of the most capable frigates in the world. It is one of the largest, most heavily armed, and possibly the most capable frigate class for power projection across the ocean. That being said, one disadvantage is the enormous amount of time and cost to build the ship, and have it ready for service. The first Type 26 will only enter service in 2026, nearly 10 years after construction started. Frigates are meant to be affordable, effective, and in the worst case, expendable. The Type 26 is certainly powerful and capable on paper, but deviates from the conventional wisdom of frigates' design, and this probably reflects a deliberate design choice on the part of the Royal Navy in the face of limitations in shipyards and personnel. How well this will work out for the Royal Navy can only be assessed in the far future. That will be all. Thanks for watching.